Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome you back to another installment in my series of Arnold Schwarzenegger movie reviews. I um, just want to let everybody know, I, you, I mean, you could see that I'm wearing a different shirt. Um, the first four, Hercules in New York, Pumping Iron, and the first two Conan films I had uh, recorded earlier. I recorded at a different time. Um, right now, I'm just... Uh, just having some trouble sleeping, so I figured I might as well try to knock out some more reviews. Just been having a lot going on, you know, since I recorded those first four. Um, first of all, my uh, uncle passed away um, kind of unexpectedly, and um, you know, been just been dealing with that. You know, we had the viewing earlier this evening, and uh, the funeral's tomorrow. But I can't. I mean, I'm I'm up. You know, I'm all awake and everything. Can't sleep. So and then. Um, got suspended from work for st stupid fucking asinine bullshit. So, you know, I'm pissed off about that. So I figured, uh, you know, I might as well do some movie reviews. Get, you know, try to help myself feel better. But, yeah, you know, with my uncle, you know, we were very close. You know, we, uh, me and my brother both spent a lot of time with him growing up. And, uh, he will be missed, but he's in a better place now, so... At least he's not, you know, in pain and stuff anymore. But anyway, enough with that. But anyway, next I'm going to review um, definitely one of the uh, the greatest science fiction action films ever made. And uh, definitely Arnold Schwarzenegger's signature role and definitely one of his best films. And I'm talking about the original Terminator. And this is the old uh, special edition DVD. This one, I know I have the light on so you probably can't see it too well, but... It has the, uh, the holographic cover, and I believe this is out of print. I don't think you can find this anymore, and I actually found it used at a Blockbuster. And um, I remember we were walking around Blockbuster one night, and we were looking through the used DVDs, and they had Terminator. I'm like, oh, Terminator, and it was really cheap. It, it was probably no more than 10 bucks. And my dad's like, what, well, do you want it? I said, yeah, you know, so he bought it for me, which was nice. And not much features on here for a special edition, I mean, it has new um, digital master, new stereo soundtrack, other voices documentary, Terminator retrospective, deleted scenes, um, hidden menus. Like, I, I don't like when they do that. Why can't they just put all the features regularly, you know? That's the big problem I have with the Nightmare on Elm Street box set, you know? But anyway, also it has storyboards, teasers, or trailers and TV spots and more, but... You know, Terminator deserves much more, in my opinion, two-disc or even a three-disc special edition, you know, because this movie is such a classic, you know, and it deserves a lot more, you know. Commentary from Arnold. I mean, I know Arnold loves to talk about his movies, so why not get him for a commentary on Terminator? But, um, you know, Terminator is a classic. I know that, you know, the movie is... How do you review a movie like Terminator that everybody knows about, that everybody has seen, that everybody... It loves, you know, it, it, it's a loved film, you know, how do you, how do you review that kind of a movie, so I mean, I'm not really going to do, I mean, I'm going to review the film, you know, give my thoughts on certain things and everything like that, but I'm also going to talk more about, you know, my personal history with the movie, you know, because this is definitely a movie that I grew up with, um, this film and the second film, you know, when I get to the second film, I'll talk more about that, but, you know, I definitely grew up with this film as well, you know, and, and it's just such a classic. I mean, Terminator is just one of those movies that never, ever gets old. And I'm just going to say it right now. I like this more than the second one. You know, I like Arnold better as a bad guy. I think he's cooler as a bad guy because you're not supposed to like him. But, you know, you end up liking him because he's just so cool. He's Arnold. You know, I like the story more because this movie was groundbreaking. It was original. And the sequel is too... But this movie set the standard, not just for, for action films, but science fiction films and films in general. Because The Terminator is a multi-layered film. It has multiple elements to it. It's not just an action film. It's not just a science fiction film. You know. There's many elements, which I'll get into the course of the review. And I know people are going to say, oh, how can, you, how can you like the first one better than the second one? And blah, 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 and this and that. And I'm going to go more in detail when I get to the second film, but... The second film's overrated. I'm sorry, folks. It is. Okay, yeah, it's a great movie, and it's a great sequel, and I love it. Don't get me wrong. And, you know, I own it on different formats. 
but you know it's always on TV Terminator 2 is always on TV and I know the first one is too but you know if I had a choice you know if there was nothing on TV and I had a choice between Terminator 1 or Terminator 2 I'd watch the first film you know I'd rather watch this one but you know Terminator 2 just gets old after a while you know I'm sorry it's a great movie don't get me wrong I love it but I just get tired of seeing it you know again I'd rather watch this I'd rather watch the first Terminator that's just me but you know the Terminator is a classic you know it turned Arnold Schwarzenegger into a mega star it turned Arnold Schwarzenegger into a household name it's true you know because prior to this you know Arnold had done the two Conan films and Pumping Iron is what he was was known for now Pumping Iron brought Arnold into the mainstream because prior to that you know he was known primarily in the bodybuilding community and you know after Pumping Iron people were like oh you know here's this guy you know he's you know he's he's got this great physique this great look he's smart you know what he's talking about people after that knew who Arnold was and he had done you know other some other films smaller films you know, I know he won a Golden Globe for a film, which is great, you know, which is cool. And then he did the Conan films, and, you know, those films were box office successes. You know, they made money at the box office, you know, both films. You know, the, the original film is a classic. The Conan the Destroyer is a very underrated sequel. I, I, I still love, I love both movies, that's just my opinion. Um, you know, and those films made Arnold a star. You know, those, those films made Arnold known to the movie world they're like oh this guy you know he's an action hero he, you know he, he he has that look and everything because the same year that Conan came out First Blood came out which to a lot of people is the you know the one that created the modern action film you know or set the standard for the action film which you know is, is very true not it's not the only one that did that because there was action films before that but but First Blood kind of pushed everything along. But Conan came out the same year. You know, so you have the two biggest action heroes in the world. They do, you know, basically um, their, one of their signature roles the same year. You know, months apart. Because I think Conan came out in the summertime. And then I think First Blood came out in the fall, if I'm not mistaken. I think, yeah, I think First Blood came out in like October. So there you go. You know, you have... Schwarzenegger and Stallone doing movies just months apart, you know, so there you go. But Terminator was the movie that made Arnold Schwarzenegger a megastar and a household name. And it's it's, it's true. There, there's no doubt about it, you know, because after this film, look what Arnold did. Commando, Raw Deal, Predator, The Running Man, Twins, um, Total Recall, Kindergarten Cop, Red Heat, Terminator 2, Last Action Hero. Eraser, True Lies, you know, so on and so forth. You know, Arnold did all his his other films after this. Terminator was the one that, that made him into what he is today. You know, and Conan, you know, like I said, Conan made him a star, but, you know, Terminator solidified him as one of the biggest, you know, stars of all time. It's true. Even, even 50 years from now, Arnold Schwarzenegger will always be one of the biggest, you know, stars of all time. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it without a shadow of a doubt, you know, and probably the most successful action star. I, I, I would doubt it, you know, but, you know, Terminator, you know, originally, you know, James Cameron, and this is when James Cameron was cool, you know, this is when James Cameron was, was a good guy. Now he's a douchebag, but, you know, now he's Jimmy Cameron. I know a lot of my friends, like Matt and Mike, they call him Jimmy Cameron now, because he's a, it's true, you know, but, you know, at this time, James Cameron was not well known. He had done, I think, Piranha 2 at this point, but I think he got fired like midway through the movie, if I'm not mistaken. I've never seen that film. Maybe one day I'll go back and, and check it out. But Jim Cameron was primarily known as a special effects guy. I know he worked at um, Roger Corman's New World Pictures. I know he worked on um, Escape from New York. He did some of the visual effects for that film. And you know, he worked on a lot of movies as a special effects artist, visual effects artist. But Terminator was, you know, his his first movie. I know he um, he came up with the idea for Terminator when he was in Italy. He I think he was promoting Piranha 2. And what happened was he had, he was very ill. He had like a 110 degree fever or something. And 
just sick as a dog. And he had this dream where the meadow endoskeleton that we see in the film was like coming out of a fire and 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 he drew a picture of it which they show in all the the extra features and everything of terminator and you know from there he created the story of the terminator and you know this this future world where machines have taken over which is kind of what's happening in real life today you know and technology has taken over and you know, they wiped out all the humans, and the humans that are left have become resistance fighters, and, you know, their leader is this guy named John Connor, who was, you know, the greatest soldier of all time, and, you know, saved the world, and, you know, they stopped the machines, and, you know, he sends a guy back because they tried to send, you know, they sent the Terminator, which is what they call them, the infiltration units, which is the endoskeleton with the skin over it. They sent him back to kill his mother before he was born, you know, and they sent the protector back and they end up, you know, having to fight the Terminator and then stop him and, and save humanity, you know, for now. And then we have the franchise, but there you go. So I know I did the plot in a nutshell, but like I said, everybody knows Terminator. Terminator is a classic without a shadow of a doubt. You know, you can't. You cannot say that this movie is not good. It's a great film. You know, so James Cameron came up with this idea. And, you know, his agent said, you know, this will never work. And no one would see this. You know, no one would, would buy this film, you know. And he fired the guy. And good. The guy deserved to get fired. I'm sure that guy's looking for a job now because he's a joke. But, you know, he came up with the idea of Terminator. And, you know, they had... um you know, when they were starting to do the film, you know, they had other people in mind. They had, like, um, they wanted O.J. Simpson, but they said that he wouldn't be believable as a killer. You know, which is fucking ironic, because what did O.J. Simpson do ten years after, you know, almost ten years after this movie came out? And he killed his wife. You know, come on. Come on, people. You know, let's get real here. You know, they wanted Lance Henriksen. They wanted all these different guys. But Arnold was the guy that got the part. And it's because, you know, Arnold, you know, they, his, Arnold's agent, you know, had got him the audition. He was supposed to audition for Kyle Reese. But Arnold's like, no, you know, I don't want to, you know, because he was reading the story. And he's like, you know, Kyle Reese, yeah, it's great to be a hero. But the real, the real challenge, the real acting challenge, the real, the real point of this film is the Terminator. You know, Arnold knew from the start that he would be better as the Terminator. And James Cameron, you know, he came in and he read, and and James Cameron, you know, when they were talking and stuff, he told him, he's like, look, you know, stop, stop what you're doing. And he drew this picture, and the picture is, and they, and again, they show it in the documentaries and everything, the picture is Arnold as the Terminator, and he's holding a gun like this, you know, like a James Bond type of pose, but it's just, you know, it's just a sketch that he came up with. And Arnold, and even, Arnold is on, he's on the retrospective documentary, but that was from like 1992, so that was like, it was an older one. But it's an interview with him and James Cameron, and they're talking about it. He's like, you know, yeah, you know, we met, and you started drawing me as the Terminator. And he's like, I knew that I was the Terminator. You know, I knew that this was what I, what I was supposed to do. And James Cameron agreed. He's like, you know, we'll, you know, you need to be the Terminator. You know, you are the Terminator, which is great. And I know a lot of people, a lot of critics and everything, say that Arnold's not a good actor and Arnold this and Arnold that and he's just an action star but that's complete bullshit because Arnold Schwarzenegger and everyone will say this if you watch the extra features on all his movies pretty much because most of his movies have the DVDs have features there's very few that don't like Conan the Destroyer does and I wish it did because I would like to hear more about that movie everyone that works with Arnold says exactly the same thing he's hard working He's professional, he's always early, he's always trying to improve himself, he's always trying to do better, and that's essentially what Terminator was for him, to prove himself to everybody. You know, Conan, you know, Conan, he did the same thing, you know, on Conan the Barbarian and the Destroyer, you know, he read the comics, he read the books, you know, he, he changed his workout to be more of a barbarian instead of a, a bodybuilder, you know, he trained with weapons and horseback riding and mountain climbing and swimming. Arnold does not half-ass anything, and that comes from his bodybuilding and his determination and everything. And on Terminator, he did the exact same thing. On Terminator, you know, he knew, okay, 
I'm a robot, I'm a cyborg, you know, I have no emotions, I have no, no empathy, no nothing. So he would act like the Terminator, you know, he would just kind of sit there, very quiet, never saying anything, not really moving, you know, moving. And he also says it on here, you know, whenever you see him as the Terminator, he always moves his eyes first and then he moves his head like he's searching for something, which is great. And even in the second film, he does it. You know, he trained with firearms. He went to the shooting range every day and shot guns, you know, different kinds of guns. He would take guns apart. You know, he would field strip the guns and put them back together, and then he would do it blindfolded so he would know, you know, how to hold the gun and how to control the weapon and where to point it and how to point it and how to shoot it and do this and do that. And Arnold, you know, he would just act like the Terminator. And he even, when they were filming the movie, you know, he stayed away from everybody because he didn't want, you know, to become friendly with the people, you know, Linda Hamilton, you know, Michael Bean, because they were supposed to be afraid of him in the movie. Not, you know, in real life, but, you know, he only did that because of the character. He was trying to get into the character, you know. So for people to say, well, Arnold was never a good actor, you know, he's just an action hero. Fucking watch Terminator. You know... Arnold's not a good actor. Get the fuck out of here with that shit, man. Fuck that. Arnold's a great actor. If he wasn't such a good actor, why why was he so successful? Why was he so popular? Why did all why did most of his films make money? There you go. But you know, so Arnold was the Terminator. And like I said earlier, you know, they wanted like guys like O. J. Simpson, Lance Hendrickson. You know, they wanted like normal looking people because the idea was you know, the guy who can blend in with the crowd, the guy who, you know, you, you would never suspect as a, as a killer. But, you know, Arnold, you know, Arnold, you know, Arnold sticks out like a sore thumb. You know, if you go to a concert, if you go to a, uh, something, you know, you can spot Arnold anywhere. And that was the idea. They're like, wait a minute, you know, this guy's supposed to be a Terminator. He's supposed to have a distinct look. You know, you're supposed to be able to know who he is. It's Arnold, you know, that's why Arnold was so good at this movie, you know, he was so good at this performance, because he fit the bill, you know, and like I said, you know, earlier, you know, I prefer Arnold as a bad guy, I really do, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, I love Terminator 2 again, you know, I, I do like the movie, I do love the movie, correction, you know, and I love all of Arnold's other films, Conan, Commando, Predator, where he's a good guy, but it's just something about this movie where he plays the bad guy that just makes him more badass, makes him more cooler, you know. Just this guy that has no emotion, has no fear, you know, nothing. All he needs to do is complete his job, which is to kill this woman, you know. And he kills, he wipes everybody out in the film, you know. He kills a, a police station full of cops. He kills these other, you know, women who have the same name. He kills innocent bystanders. He doesn't care. All he wants to do is complete his goal. And it works. I mean, you know, I know he's a bad guy, but, you know, he was just so good at it. You know, Arnold was so good at this character. You know, and, and you know, the way that he, you know, goes about his mission, you know, nice night for a walk, eh? Nice night for a walk, you know. Wash day, huh? Nothing clean, right? Nothing clean, right? You know, f fuck you, asshole. You know, get out. You know, great lines that... You know, this guy, this guy means business. You you can't fuck with this guy, you know. And like Kyle Reese says, you know, the Terminator is out there, you know. And he, it can't be bargained with, it can't be reasoned with, and he will not stop until you are dead, you know. And Michael Bean is fantastic in this movie. You know, I'll get more on Michael Bean in, in a little bit here. But just, you know, Arnold, just the way that he did this character is awesome, you know. And he's... He's got no emotion on his face, you know, no, no smiles, no nothing, you know, whatsoever. And it just works. It works so well, you know, I just, I love it. You know, I love Arnold. I love it. And, you know, the image that they use on all the posters of him with the sunglasses looking cool with the 45, you know, that is the Terminator. You know, that is Arnold. That's the, that's the T-101, you know, that's Arnold. That every time, you know, nine times out of ten when people think of Arnold, they think of that picture. Or from Terminator 2 when he's on the motorcycle, which is another iconic shot, which is great. But, you know, when he, you know, that that poster, that picture is just, 
iconic. You know, I, I got one in my room. I think my dad, I don't know if my dad had it drawn for me or my dad bought it from someone, but someone did a, a pencil drawing and it's Arnold as the Terminator and I have it in my room. I just, I love that picture. And you know, that to me, that's Arnold. You know, you don't need, you know, you know, see, and posters back then were just so simplistic, you know, and, and it's much more beautiful, you know. I miss the old, you know, like the Conan, like I showed the Conan poster. You know, the original poster was just, it was just a guy with a painting, you know, and, and you don't have that anymore. Everything now is fucking photoshopped and cropped in and, and it looks so stupid, you know, but not anymore. But, you know, enough about Arnold in this role. It, it's his signature role. Again, I think this his, he does a better performance in this one than Terminator 2 and definitely Terminator 3, which more on Terminator 3 later. But Terminator fucking, you know, his, his performance fucking rules, you know, amazing. But anyway, you know, other people that are in this film, you know, you have, you know, Lance Henriksen, who I thought was really good. I, I, I'm a huge fan of Lance Henriksen's work. Um, it was cool to see him in this film. You know, it's really cool because Lance Henriksen and Bill Paxson, I think, are the only two guys who have been in movies with Terminators, Aliens, and Predators, which is pretty awesome, you know, when you're in those franchises. But, you know, um, you have Paul Winfield as Lieutenant Traxler, and I know a lot of people remember Paul Winfield. I know he did a, I think it was a miniseries where he played Martin Luther King. I know a lot of people know him from that, but I remember him from this and Cliffhanger. He was in Cliffhanger with Stallone. He was one of the um, the treasury agents. When, um, after the plane got hijacked, he was in the office, and he's like, yeah, you know, this plane, you know. He was a small part, but I remember him from Cliffhanger. Unfortunately, he passed away. Um, but I liked him as an actor. I liked it, like I said, I liked him in this, liked him in Cliffhanger, some other movies I've seen him in. I really enjoyed him as an actor. Um... You know, and Linda Hamilton, you know, Sarah Connor, I thought she was great. You know, Linda Hamilton at this time, I know she was, I think she was on Beauty and the Beast at this time, or right after this she got on that show, but I've always liked Linda Hamilton. I thought she was great in this, and Terminator 2, I, I liked um, uh, Dante's Peak with uh, Pierce Brosnan, I have to pick that up on DVD, I think it's a fun movie. Um... You know, I liked her in a lot of other stuff. Very underrated actress. It's a shame she didn't have a, a huge, you know, a bigger impact, you know, on Hollywood because, you know, she's a very good actress. And Sarah Connor in this film, you know, she's a young woman. You know, she she doesn't really know, like, what her purpose is in life. She doesn't know what she's supposed to do. And, you know, she's just kind of going through life and, and, you know, just trying to deal with it. And then all of a sudden this situation comes about. You know, she has no idea what this thing is about. She has no idea about her future and everything. You know, like she says in the movie, you know, I can't even balance a checkbook. You know, how am I supposed to be the mother of the future? But, you know, it just, it, she, I thought she did a great performance because she was like this young, innocent woman, and all of a sudden she's thrown into this fight for humanity, this fight for the world. She doesn't have a choice, but she's got to do it, you know. And then in Terminator 2, she does a complete 180. She's a badass, you know. She's been training, she's been preparing, but more on that later, you know. It's just it's just great. I thought she did a great performance in both of these films, you know. And again, a very underrated actress. Why she never had a, a huge, successful Hollywood career is beyond me. She definitely had the tools for it. And lastly, Michael Biehn. Michael Biehn, I thought, was fantastic as Kyle Reese. You know, he's the hero of the movie. You know, Michael Biehn is another guy. Very underrated. I loved him in this. I loved him in Aliens. He's actually my favorite character in Aliens. I know people get pissed off at me. Oh, why isn't Ripley your favorite? Sorry, I want to be different. You know, sorry. You know, I try to be different from everybody else. But, you know, I liked him in, in, in the, in the, in the, the Abyss as a villain. I liked him in Navy Seals. I like Michael Bean. He's a great actor. Very underrated as well. And I just thought he was great as Kyle Reese. You know, gr you know growing up watching this movie... Kyle Reese was always one of my favorite heroes from from the movies, and you know, again, you know, he's he's this guy that grew up in in the dark, you know, post-apocalyptic future. You know, he had to fight these machines from the time he was born. Basically, you know, he became a great fighter. You know, he's a became a sergeant in Techcom. You know, under Perry, like he's doing, you know, he's doing the lines and everything. 
you know, he just knows how to spot these Terminators, you know, you know, rubber flesh, you know, very tough to spot, you know, bad breath, you know, just great. He just did so great in this role. And, you know, I know on the the Terminator 2 extras, there's a, there was a documentary about the deleted scenes, because there's the deleted scene in the second movie, which is in all the extended versions, with him, you know, and he was saying how, you know, the first movie, you know, it wasn't just an action film, it was, it was a love story as well, and it's true, and I'll get to that in a little bit, but, you know, here's this guy that, you know, you know, I, I came back for you, Sarah, you know, I've loved you, I've always loved you, you know, this guy, he's just trying to do his job, and we find out he's John Connor's father, you know, and, 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 you know, he was only with this woman for, you know, he only knew of this woman of, of stories and everything, but he loved her. That's love right there, man. You know, you don't, you don't have that, you know, that kind of love anymore. But, you know, just great, you know. And he's just so badass, you know. He was just so badass in this movie as a good guy, you know. We stormed the wires of the camps. You know, we sweat, we smashed those mother, metal motherfuckers into drunk, ugh, junk, you know. Just great lines, you know. Just classic, you know, in the scene where he freaks out in the police station. You know, he'll put his hand down her throat and rip her fucking heart out. You know, just just great stuff, you know. Terminators don't feel pain. I do. Don't do that again. You know, come with me if you want to live, you know. Michael Bean was just fantastic in this movie, you know. And again, another guy that, you know, he was in, you know, again, he was in Aliens. He was in The Abyss. You know, he was in... Navy Seals, you know, Grindhouse was like a comeback role, and, you know, I just love Michael Bean, he's a great actor, you know, I, I've definitely loved to meet him and shake his hand and get his autograph, you know, and just ask him about, you know, what's it like to be an action hero, and I love the guy, you know, great actor in my opinion, always been a big fan of his, you know, I remember watching Aliens when I was younger, I'm like, hey, that's the guy from Terminator, you know, so, yeah, Michael Bean is great, you know, great cast in this film, you know, this movie is just chock full of, of greatness, you know, you know, Stan Winston did the, the, the makeup effects, you know, which is great, Fantasy 2 did the visual effects, Fantasy 2 also worked on the sequel, and they worked on Fright Night, they've, they've worked on a lot of, a lot of different movies over the years, which is great, um, you know, and just a great score by Brad Fidel, and Brad Fidel, another guy, he did the music for Fright Night, Striking Distance with Bruce Willis, you know, he came back for Terminator 2, you know, who who could forget the Terminator theme? You know. You know, who could forget that? You know, classic theme. You know, but, you know, Terminator, I mean, how much more can I say about this movie? You know, honestly. You know, I know I've been talking for almost 30 minutes now, but, you know, Terminator is just, the movie is a fucking slam bang balls to the wall classic you know it's an action film it's a science fiction film it, it is a love story you know it is because you know this guy's going back in time for the woman that he loves you know it is a love story and it's a horror film if you think about it it's a horror film because Arnold is basically Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees you know and he's trying to kill this woman you know so there you go but the film you know it's just chock full of great scenes you know I love the intro when it, you know, where they show the future and then it has the scroll, you know, the final battle will be fought tonight in our time, you know, whatever it says. You know, I like when, you know, Arnold comes back, you know, you know, your clothes, give them to me. Fuck you, asshole. You know, and Bill Paxton's in that scene. Brian Thompson from Cobra and Lionheart. He was on Buffy for a little bit, you know, as the punks. So, and yeah, you know, Bill Paxton is, I believe, still... The only actor to ever be killed by a Terminator, an alien, and a Predator. So, you know, hey, he's got room to brag. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I just need to take a drink here. Ah, excuse me. I love when Michael Bean comes in, you know, when he takes the gun from the cop. You know, what year is it? You know, you know, what date is it? The year, the year. And I love when he goes in the, the sporting goods store, and I've always liked the shot when he when he puts the shoes on, and then, like, he's behind the, the curtain in the photo booth, and he puts his foot down. I like how he laces the shoe, you know, the strap. I always thought that shot was just so cool for some reason. I don't know what it is, but it was just cool. And I like how he, he takes the shotgun out of the car, and then later, 
you know, he cuts it down and makes his own strap, you know, his whole, you know, his own sling, you know, they call it a sling, they don't call it a strap, you know, and just cocks it, you know, great, great cinematography, and who is the cinematographer on this? Adam Greenberg, and Adam Greenberg has walked, uh, worked on a lot of films, you know, just great, great shots like that, you know, and, and it, it, they're James Cameron shots because they're in Aliens and everything, but, you know, just fantastic, you know, cinematography in this film, you know, I like you know, when Arnold goes into the gun shop, you know, the 45 long slide with laser sighting. And what was cool is, you know, and the laser sight at, in this film, at the time that the film was being made, laser sight technology was, was very new. And the way that they did it, they built two models. One, it could operate on its own, but they could only use it for a limited time because the battery was, was, was it would drain fast. And then another one, which they had for, for all the shots where like Arnold was holding it with the laser sight, um, he had actually had a battery connected in his arm, and it would go down through his his sleeve and come out and into his other hand, and he would have to squeeze, like it was like a pump pump thing. He had to squeeze the pump and then shoot the gun. That's why you never see both hands in the same in the same shot because that's why he's always one handed because he always hit the other hand is down holding the the pump for the battery so he could do that you know so i like that scene you know the uzi 9 millimeter 12 gauge auto loader you know plasma watt with 40 you know uh plasma 40 watt plasma rifle Ugh, I fucked it up plasma rifle with 40 watt range just what you see pal you know dick miller plays the the gun shop owner and you know who dick miller is dick miller has been in a ton of films great actor you know you can't do that in here raw you know just, just great, you know, Arnold is just so badass in this movie, you know, God, love this movie, and, you know, when he kills the first Sarah Connor, I just, I don't know why, it's just so, like, it's scary, it is, but it's just so, like, like, Arnold's like, he doesn't say it, but he's like, you know, he's like, like, he's like the Wu-Tang Clan, he ain't nothing to fuck with, you know, for those that remember that, you know, just, Sarah Connor, yes, you know, just, I don't know, it's just so badass. I mean, it's scary, too, because he's the bad guy. But, you know, it's so badass. It's just so cool, you know. And, you know, I like the nightclub scenes when Sarah Connor, you know, uh, Kyle Reese is following her, and then she's in the nightclub, and Arnold shows up, and they have the shootout. And that's the only time that Michael Bean and Schwarzenegger are in the same frame. When he gets shot the second time, they're in the same frame together, which I thought was... You know, cool. And then the, you have the classic chase scene where Arnold, you know, gets blown up and set on fire and jumps on the car and punches through the glass and tries to grab her. And, you know, and they go in the, the garage and, you know, he's telling her the story, you know, you know, who I am and this and who you are and, you know, just great stuff. Then they have another chase scene and then they go to the police station and Arnold, you know, is, uh, he goes to this hotel and he's repairing himself. And I know that he had a difficult time doing that because like the the eye like the red eye it would always burn out like it would only the battery would only last for a little bit then it would burn out and i know he didn't like the prosthetics and everything but you know hey it's part of the deal and i know that one time they were filming and filming had like they they took a break and because that was all done with the special effects crew that was a set and everything but you know arnold took a break for lunch and he went to this restaurant, and he noticed all these people were giving him, like, these strange looks and everything. And he went to look in the mirror, and he still had all the makeup on. He forgot to take the makeup off. He's like, oh, shit, you know. Oh, man, these people think I'm, like, weird and everything. But, yeah, it's, it's a funny story. Um, you know, and, and a lot of people don't know, this movie actually got delayed by nine months because um, they were supposed to begin filming, but Arnold got held up doing... Conan the Destroyer, so they had to wait nine months, and they knew that Arnold was the Terminator, so they didn't, they said, you know what, we'll wait, we'll wait our nine months, we'll, we'll do other stuff, you know, and then in that time, James Cameron actually wrote Rambo First Blood Part 2, and he started working on Aliens as well, and then Arnold showed up two weeks later, two weeks after they started because of the time and everything, so a lot of people don't know that. You know, and then, you know, the great scene, you know, you got a dead cat in there, man? Fuck you, asshole, you know, just great dialogue. And, of course, the police station massacre, which, you know, is a great scene, you know, and, of course, has Arnold's signature line, which is, I'll be back, you know, come on. That line, 
headline does not get any better than that, you know. Just and originally he was supposed to say I will come back, but he's like no. He's like why? You know that doesn't sound like I will come back. Like you know that sounds too robotic. You know. Remember the Terminator is supposed to blend in. You know he's you know. So he changed it. You know, and him and James Cameron apparently argued about it, and James Cameron kind of got in Arnold's face, and he's like look I don't tell you how to act, so don't tell me how to write. And he just said it. I'll be back and. It was fine, and, you know, 30 years later, you know, it's still popular, you know, and then they have the the scene where we see the future flashback with Kyle Reese, which he looks like, um, which they actually used for the Solid Snake on the first Metal Gear game cover, you know, they actually used that, that inspiration for the image, you know, and then the uh, future Terminator comes in and starts killing people, and that guy is actually Franco Colombo, who was... You know, still a very good friend of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Stallone. Him and Stallone were friends as well. You know, they had him come in, I guess, for a couple of days to film that. You know, and then we have the finale, which is fantastic. You know, well, I, back, I missed it. You know, we have the love scene, which is great, you know, where he's like, you know, I came back for you, Sarah. You know, I love you. You know, I shouldn't have said that. And they, you know, they create John Connor. <laughs> there you go. Then we have the finale where Arnold comes in on his motorcycle and, you know, starts you know, have another chase scene, and then you have the scene with the truck, you know, get out, another great line, and, you know, Kyle Reese puts the pipe bomb in the truck, <laughs> then we have the endoskeleton, and the chase through the factory, which they cut the scene out, but it was actually Cyberdyne, you know, and unfortunately Kyle Reese dies, but that's okay, and, you know, another classic line, you're terminated, fucker, you know, <laughs> you know, and then the movie ends with Sarah Connor, you know, doing journals for John Connor and you know there's a storm coming you know I know and she rides off into the storm you know da 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 you know Terminator is a classic you know I know a lot of people are like well the special effects suck come on f folks it was 30 years ago and it's you know a lot of the, the you know animatronics and stop motion you know whatever but Terminator is a classic and I can't believe this film's 30 years old this year in October it'll be 30 years old but, you know, classic film, you know, I, I can't say enough about this. I know, you know, sort of a review, sort of a retrospective, but, you know, like I said, I grew up with this film. I used to watch it all the time on TV. You know, I, I told you how I got this DVD. Um, I remember when I was really little, I remember my dad rented it from the video store, and my dad fell asleep. So I got to watch most of the movie by myself, which I thought was really cool because I'm like, yeah, this is rated R, you know. I get to watch it all by myself, so I, you know, I thought that was really cool, you know, growing up, but, yeah, I mean, I have it on, you know, I have a couple of VHS copies of it, you know, different versions and different, you know, special editions and stuff like that, DVD, I have it on a uh, Laserdisc as well, I like the, the new Blu-ray's artwork, and I know that's the remastered version, because I know the original Blu-ray, like, the quality was horrible, so maybe if I find that new Blu-ray cheap, maybe I'll pick it up, because I like the artwork, and, it's Terminator, you know, I'd like to see what the Blu-ray looks like, so, but, uh, anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed, uh, my review of the Terminator, you know, it's just a classic film, it, it, it really doesn't get any better than this, and again, I like this more than the first film, I like Arnold as a bad guy more, he's just so much cooler to me as a bad guy, and just a groundbreaking original classic, one of the most original films ever made, you can't go wrong with the Terminator, so anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this review, and stay tuned because next I'm going to review a movie that Arnold Schwarzenegger definitely regrets being in. And one that has, you know, a unfortunate backstory to it regarding him. But Red Sonja. So you can look forward to that rant then because it's a piece of shit. But anyway guys, I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, take care and I'll see you later. Bye bye.